going to start the recording. It's recording now. Yeah, it's now recording. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so like like uh, the people who are deliberately perhaps uh, disturbing, na, uh, that we call it Zoom bombing. That is that is a problem. We have to, I think, uh, we might have a feature to throw them out, uh, exit. <laughs> Meet has a single button that you can remove them. Mm -hmm. So in in the room, do we have that feature that we can remove the people who are disturbing yes. unnecessarily? You can. We can either remove them or we can put them back in the waiting room. And, okay. And I, I think removing is best if you can manage that. Yeah. So okay. yeah. uh, once they're removed, they can't get back in. Yeah. I, I have not experienced such kind of deliberate disturbance so far. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know whether how that happens. I have seen people trying their best, but they, they make a mistake or error because they don't know how things work. And, and that's why the sound is on and there is some noise going on in the homes. And yeah, that sound is coming. That's, that's no, what. no, that's very innocent. That's not Zoom bombing. That's Zoom okay. bombing is people who are very nasty. They're trolls, basically. Uh, okay. And they uh, okay. they put on very embarrassing stuff. And mm -hmm. um, if it happens during a meeting, actually, I when it happened with Nick Peachy, I, mm -hmm. uh, he, I we hadn't started the recording, which is unfortunate yeah. in a way because if we had we would have had a recording of it which i think would have been very interesting to play back and learn from that actually i can um uh, i can provide you with zoom bombing recordings if you like yeah, yeah that will be yeah good to see yeah <laughs> uh, yeah just... because we can, uh, what we did is we uh, i have i still have the original recordings of the event on zoom okay and uh -huh. we also have a cut and edited version on YouTube for our uh, publications. But mm -hmm. on these, okay. obviously, the Zoom bombing incident has been removed. But I can still provide you with these small instances of Zoom bombing, mm -hmm. uh, just mm -hmm. for the sake of learning, Vance. Mm -hmm. yeah, like. yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. Somebody is unmuted. We can just mute that person. Uh, that's, that's Alpa. Alpa. So Alpa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I muted okay. her. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, you're you're very well versed in this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are. I'm Dilip. <laughs> Dilip. Dilip. I, I met Dilip in Velour. I'm not sure yeah. if it was yeah. at Foodies. You remember Foodies? Uh, Velour, right? Velour VIT Institute. Vivid yes, right. that's right. Well, food. I, I remember Velour quite well and the institute, but I also remember Foodies. That's what yes, we, yeah. they used to call the yeah. place where you go and get your meals. And they had the, yes, best, yeah. the best vegetarian meals. Just <laughs> dish it on your plate. It was really good. So, uh, okay, let, let me introduce us. Uh, this is May 20th, 2020. I'm Vance mm -hmm. Stevens in Malaysia, Penang, Malaysia. And we, uh, Heike Philp is here also to help us with Zoom security, I suppose. And um, she's from Germany. And then Dilip Barad, as we were just saying, somebody I met in India. Uh, I can't remember exactly when, about uh, five years ago? Seven uh, years ago? And, and nine, 2009 or 11, I think it was. Ah, okay. Uh, very big, I think, about seven, eight years back, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, he, he made an impression. And then he's uh, starting to put on Facebook. Maybe I could do a share really quick and I could show you. I, was, I had it up just a second ago. So here we go. Here's Dilip. Uh, this this is what he's doing now, and um, I don't know, Dilip, what what are you doing here in this uh, in this picture? This was that that workshop photograph which I was conducting, which about which I am going to talk today. So that is the this is my home. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. right now also sitting and working. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, if so you conducting conducting a workshop, yeah, this photograph is about that. Yeah, I'll put a link to this in the text chat. Let me just do that. And uh, so anybody who wants to go and see that uh, that link can pursue it there. That's a temporary link uh, after today or tomorrow because it's uh, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock at night here. So tomorrow I'll put it in uh, in the learningtogether.net blog. But anyway, well, the link will still be there until, until Heike presents on the 22nd and then we'll replace this with hers so um, okay so let me get let me stop the share here and so in a moment I'll turn it over to Le Dilip 
And um, ah, yes. yes, okay. So anyway, I, I'm really interested in talking to you because of your experience and also you've been inviting people to um, to your Facebook, uh, I, I, I think you call it, are they watch parties? Is that what? Yeah, watch parties, yeah. We, we had conducted a webinar, a national mm -hmm. level webinar for yeah. two days. I'm and really, we had a, a live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on Meet. The webinar uh, was on Google Meet, and we okay. live streamed. And then there were watch parties that I conducted on there. Yes, and I was really intrigued. Uh, not only just to sit in and listen on your your students' presentations, but uh, you every now and then you would shift to you would scroll your screen, and I could see I don't know how many participants there. How many participants did you have in those meetings? Uh, in, in in that Google Meet, that was a webinar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In webinar, there is a capacity of 250. We have this G Suite educational account, so maximum 250 can join. And in our plenary sessions, it was full. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. it was very difficult to get the plenary speakers inside, <laughs> and we have yeah. to request somebody to exit so that the plenary speakers can come. So it was huge. Uh, and we have uh, like uh, some 15,000 viewers on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, so this is very impressive. It's very impressive mm -hmm. that you're conducting a class, and I can see mm -hmm. you scrolling through the list of participants, and yeah. uh, I'm just, you know, uh, blown away by the, yeah. there's quite a lot to handle. So I'm really interested to hear uh, about how you do it, because you're, yeah. you're obviously doing it very well. Um, mm. So, Dilip, why don't I hand it over to you and let you tell us what you're up to. Yeah, yeah, please, please, pardon, please. I'm, I'm admitting a few other waiting outside. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Balaji <laughs> is coming. Welcome, yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, take your time. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're not due to start for another minute. Yeah. So, yeah. no problem. We're very mm -hmm. relaxed here. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah. I'm not sure what Heike is trying to tell us. Heike, is there, you want a message to everybody? Click on participants so you can see the list of participants, okay? Yeah, we have a couple of participants in here that are not, uh, they they appear with a Galaxy On 7, for example. Uh, yeah, and if we is, could uh, ask you to rename yourself, also perhaps if you show an email address as your login name, also mm. there's a possibility to rename yourself and to, so, to tell afterwards um, Zoom to remember that name. Yeah. That's true. That's true. There is one yeah. waiting outside Galaxy J6 also. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, this is a this is a request to Galaxy on seven. Uh, it is better you rename yourself, otherwise we'll have to put you outside the the room. It's, it's not that we <laughs> we don't really throw people out, but it's just for them also for future uh, Galaxy J6 also, also is there. So exactly, uh, yeah. and mm. I'm happy, Dilip. I'm quite happy to. Uh, allow people into the waiting rooms. If you want to start with your presentation, we will uh -huh. take care of this. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Then that's good. So then uh, I will start, and you can take care of the waiting room there. Okay? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Seven thirty was the time, so many of the people might just be uh, chirping inside now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's exactly now seven thirty here. here. Okay, and you're on the half hour yeah. system, so it's uh, yeah. 10 o'clock here, and I think for Heike, mm -hmm. probably yeah. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe. Okay, yeah. That's okay, so let me start then uh, my, my presentation, afternoon. and people will keep on coming. Okay. Sorry, what time, Heike? It's uh, 4, 4 p.m. Ah. in Central Europe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, of course. I was confused with the noon start times. Yes. <laughs> we, we, uh, we start at noon. 1300 or 1400 and this one is a 1400 start so yeah 1400 utc 730 in india all right 730 in india yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, okay so uh, 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 may i start then sure yeah. please do yeah yeah okay i am also still getting the notification about people waiting so i think uh, heiki is going to take care of uh, yes, yes, yes. You can ignore those uh, yeah, if Heike okay. doesn't do it. it. It seems okay to let people in, so we don't seem to have any problem here. Yeah, okay. 
So this was uh, like uh, the uh, uh, I conducted an online remote hands-on workshop uh, 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 last fortnight, uh, and this is a kind of an experience uh, sharing for uh, that. This was a very unique and first kind of an experience for me also, because we have conducted many uh, uh, physical workshops uh, where we are present with the participants in a lab environment, and we conduct. But then remotely talking is one thing. And doing workshop and that also hands-on workshop is something very unique and something very different also uh, there and, and this was the first tryout uh, it, it worked very well uh, we were able to achieve uh, uh, we were able to do what we expected to do and so I, I thought that this experience should be shared with the people uh, there so uh, this is the GIF images of the participants uh, working in their environment this is my environment in my home where I was working, uh, and this is how we did. Uh, the participants shared some of the photographs of how they were working uh, in that environment uh, here. Uh, uh, this is the distance. Uh, uh, I am that Ahmedabad, Surat. There is Bhavnagar city in between, and I am located at this top uh, of the marker. And at the below down, there is Chennai near Bengaluru. Uh, that is where the participants were located. So it was almost 2,000 kilometers away from where I was, and this uh, was conducted. Uh, in the city of Chennai, also all the participants were uh, in their homes. Uh, we know it is a lockdown COVID-19 time. And so it was, again, some 30 to 35 kilometers in a city where all the participants were spread across. Uh, they are remotely located. Even in, in a city of Chennai, uh, the participants were also located there. Uh, uh, in this presentation, I will say what were our ob objectives, a brief literature review, a methodology, learning outcome, experience of the resource person. And uh, I have also invited some of the participants who were there in that uh, workshop from Chennai to, to, to speak, uh, to say us something about their feedback also. And I invited one of my friends, uh, Professor Mahesh Jiwani. Uh, he has not joined. If he is able to join, he also will share because he also is conducting these kinds of remote uh, workshops there. So objectives uh, of our uh, EFDP, uh, 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 Faculty Development Program, uh, was to train undergraduates and postgraduates teachers. So it is a lot of people dealing with higher education. Uh, these teachers all are dealing with higher education, college and postgraduate students. Uh, to use digital platform for online remote teaching. So that was the purpose that they, these teachers can uh, uh, teach, uh, uh, do remote teaching with the help of digital platforms. It was also to orient them as learner and train as teachers because uh, most of the teachers uh, were not having an experience to be online learner. So one of the objectives also was to see that they are oriented that what is it to be an online learner. So that experience they can utilize that what kind of problems their learners, their students may also face when they deal with digital platforms to make them ready to take online remote classes as early as possible because we are in a mode of emergency. Uh, so we, we have a very interesting word also, ERT, emergency remote teaching. Uh, the Zooming teachers, uh, the, this word it is rather not only online, but it is emergency remote teaching. So we have to keep them ready for that purpose also that at the end of the two days workshop, they are ready for emergency remote teaching in their environment. Narrow down to single digital platform was a necessary thing for us, rather than talking about innumerable platform, the teachers are confused with that. So uh, now if you want to make teachers ready to use a digital platform and become a teacher immediately after the workshop, we have to talk about only one digital platform and only single way of doing uh, working on that platform. So we worked on one particular platform that is Google Classroom and Google Meet. The combination of both the things can help us in solving out our problem. Uh, I have seen that in many of the workshops, uh, uh, the facilitators talk a lot about innumerable platforms, innumerable tools, web tools. And, uh, uh, and at the end of the day, teachers are so baffled, participants are so baffled that they don't know what to do in their real classroom. Not only that, even if teachers keep on trying innumerable platforms and web tools, then again also their students will be baffled. We have seen that uh, 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 all the students do not have a high-end kind of smartphone. They may be using a mid-range, low-range kind of a smartphone. And if you want to uh, like uh, make it heavy with lots of apps, 
then the mobile phone is not going to work also for them. So we have to go for the apps which are very easy to be installed and they are not heavy on their smartphones and teachers don't keep on changing their, uh, their, their platform. That also was necessary. So this was our objectives when we were working on this. Uh, the literature review that we have done, the two interesting literature review we have done, one was written way back in 2006 7 and uh, this was an Asia-wide real-time distributed hands-on workshop. And then second one was of 2016. In both these workshops, uh, 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 this literature review, we have seen that in 2006 7 uh, this uh, uh, Mikawa, Basu, Okawa, Murai, in their uh, 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 paper, they were talking about uh, establishing a language lab, uh, not only, so, so, sorry, not language lab, but a computer lab at one place, and then establishing or replicating the similar kind of labs in remote places, and then training the teachers from one lab to another lab. Now, today, that is not possible. Today, we have a better infrastructure. Today, we have digital platforms, online, high-speed internet connectivity, 4G, 5G, in such a way that we do not have to establish labs in various parts of the places. Uh, without doing that, we are able to do now. This is our advantage that we are there in our, just in 13, 14 years of this research, we have moved in such a way that we don't have to take care of establishing labs in remote places before doing uh, online remote workshop. Uh, the second one by Laila, uh, remote workshops collaboration done virtually. Now, this was a very interesting one and a couple of very interesting ideas were there which we were not able to do because we require high end of technology users. But I will refer to one or two examples uh, from that. But there are interesting ideas to be taken from that particular uh, uh, blog. That is remote workshops, collaboration done virtually. So based on this two, one is uh, 13, 14 years old idea establishing the thing. Another one is using wonderful apps to work out in a collaboration way. Our methodology, like our model was exactly a replica, a replica of face-to-face -face model. So, uh, uh, because uh, uh, this Leila's article is talking about a new model altogether. So we were just replicating what we were doing in face-to-face -face model of that. The same thing now we are doing in a remote way also. What we did, which was very unique, was we used two devices. All participants were informed that you have to work on two devices, if possible, one mobile phone and one laptop, and it was very good that all the participants, 100%, they were able to have a laptop and a mobile phone. Uh, why we wanted to do this? Because on mobile phone, they will connect with the resource person over Google Meet. They will see the teacher speaking and teacher sharing the screen, and then they will do it. The demonstration will be on the mobile phone, and the workout, hands-on work will be done on a laptop, a separate laptop on which they were working. Uh, we thought that uh, uh, let us have one laptop and let us split the screen. In half screen, there is a Zoom or a Meet going on. In the other half screen, they can keep on working. That also is a better alternative, one device. But we know that when we split the screen, we can't see all the features of the, uh, of, of, of the laptop. And time and again, you have to enlarge your screen to work. And then again, you have to minimize. Uh, those teachers who are not very good, and in this group, uh, all teachers were not very good in technology. So I thought that it will be very risky to work and maybe they will, if they will shut down the window, then again to log in other things which might be a problem. So I thought that let them work with one enlarged laptop screen and let there be another uh, uh, mobile device to work with. Another important thing which was necessary here was that, that Google Classroom or Google Meet, they have a, a separate interface for laptop as well as mobile phone. So teachers should be well versed with mobile device as well as laptop. They have to plan their lessons on laptop because there are additional features given on the laptop interface, but they should know how mobile is working because their learners, that is students, are almost 90% of the students are going to work on their mobile devices. So if teachers are trained only for laptop and not for mobile, or only for mobile and not for laptop, it will be a limited training. All teachers should be exposed to both the interfaces. So we worked on this uh, multiple devices, one, one laptop and one mobile phone there. So that was uh, uh, our objective to work out in this particular uh, work. Uh, the face-to-face -face workshop model, uh, the better alternative, as I said, was this. So this, this they used Mural. Mural is a digital workspace for work, visual collaboration. And this is a very interesting idea because when we are remotely located, we exactly don't know what is happening with the learners. 
they, they sometimes are able to share their screen. Many times they are not able to share their screen. We had a group of 25 learners and if we keep on watching everybody's screens being shared with the resource person, it is time consuming also. Instead of that, if you use Mural, uh, a digital workspace for visual collaboration, it is very interesting. We are not able to do this, but it's a very interesting idea. Another option is that, that we can also have a shared Google Doc or a sheet on which also, if not visually, graphically very good, but in a digit form also we can work out on this, but that is necessary part. We did not work on this. This should be added into our methodology. Uh, there were 25 participants. There were three dropouts on second day. Uh, at 20 were able to complete all the tasks. And so that was a very good success rate uh, in, in, in this group there. Our learning outcomes, uh, like for example, we worked on all these things, e-group uh, we started with and 100% participants were able to create e-group uh, web conferencing on online teaching, Google Meet, well, quite successfully they were able to work on that. Digital teaching platform, there is Google Classroom. So all other activities we have done on Google Classroom. And uh, we, we faced a problem with uh, things like uh, uh, creating online quiz at one place and then uh, taking online test and submitting written assignment. This was a little bit problematic and two or three participants they were not able to do this. Uh, by and large, all of the participants were able to do that. Otherwise, assigning activities in Google Classroom, sharing video resources, sharing resources from Drive, that was done by everybody. Uh, that they were able. But online quiz, how to create, was a bit problematic. We need more time than what I expected. Uh, taking online tests also requires more time because sharing the link and other things requires something. And submitting written assignment was rather more confusing for the thing. The same thing is going to happen with learners also. So that was an uh, interesting part of the learning on, on, on the part of uh, participants also. Uh, when we look at, uh, let me minimize this uh, window. Okay. Uh, when we look at this uh, learning experiences of a resource person. Uh, so what, what, I, what I, I have learned or what I have experienced in this was that for teachers digital uh, is the part of skill set an additional skill, but almost absolute one in recent times, like lockdown time, COVID-19 crisis, online teaching. This has become ultimately an absolute skill for all the teachers yeah, there. The only sure way to teach skills is to make people do it. Without doing, skills can never be mastered. The more we practice, the more we master the skills. So, just talking about the skills never works. We have to obviously do hands-on uh, uh, workshops for that. Hands-on practice, even in real life situation is exhausting uh, uh, because in a lab environment, if there are 25 participants sitting in a lab, the resource person has, has to rush from one corner to another corner. And within three hours, the, the resource person is completely exhausted in a real life situation also. Imagine the situation on online is much tough. If you are sitting at one place, then also it is very tough to guide uh, everybody there. Because learners are of mixed ability. All learners do not have uh, uh, digital skills at one level. Their digital skills are, are of mixed ability. And uh, some are techno-friendly and some are technophobic. And in each and every group, we will find at least three to five technophobic learners. And obviously they are going to uh, 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 eat away lots of our time. And also that becomes a boredom or a longer wait for the, those people who are very fast uh, learners also. So techno-friendly uh, and technophobic. Uh, within this group, uh, uh, the, the resource person remotely has to conduct their workshops. In this remote teaching or say remote workshop, all the learners are in their homes learning as an isolated learner. Now in a workshop environment, even there are models of workshops where the resource person is remotely located, but participants are at one place. Now here, even participants were isolated learner. They were all individually located in their homes. They were not able to help each other. We have seen in our workshop that some of the learners were helping each other, and that was a very good way of learning also. Peer learning was happening uh, there, and that was uh, very interesting. Uh, but still, uh, when we have a physical workshop and when we are doing that in a physical environment, we always find that there are four or five fast learners, good learners, and they start helping resource person. They start guiding the peer learners and that makes 
the, the physical workshops are uh, very easy going uh, and, and the fast learner starts helping the other people. Whereas here it was rather tough for everybody to control the entire group. As it is tough beyond imagination to keep the entire class move on shoulder to shoulder all together, lots of improvisations become necessary for the, the resource person also and they have to wait with tremendous amount of patience. Uh, the resource person requires tremendous amount of patience in working with those things. We also suggested uh, as, a, as a kind of an improvisation that uh, keep your family members who are good in technology around you, like your children may be good in technology, your spouse may be good in, in the use of technology, so let them they may be in and around you so that they can guide you, help you in working out with some of those things. At some places that also work uh, very well. What worked in this remotely uh, handled hands-on workshop for faculty development? Well, first thing was that our idea of two devices worked very well. Had we not worked on two devices, it might have been a failure uh, altogether to get any kind of success. Uh, so this idea, uh, it, it came from nowhere because I, I never, I have not read anywhere uh, any research project or anything where people are talking that do remote workshops with two devices. Suddenly, I got an idea. I, I, I talked with the, the coordinator that, is it possible to have these two things? Uh, they said that, well, it will be possible. Uh, the spouse may have one of the laptops or devices, and, and then the person will also have a smartphone. Uh, without this, uh, our workshop would have been uh, utterly uh, a failure. Participants will have a mobile phone as well as laptop or, or PC. That was what we said. Needless to say, high-speed internet and basic IT, ICT skills were also necessary. Now, Chennai is one of the metropolitan city in India. It is a, a, a metropolitan urban space. And in urban spaces, we do have high-speed internet connection. Had these this learners or teachers been located in remote areas or in rural areas, I don't know whether we might have got the same success rate or not. Maybe not, I would say, because in remote villages still, the net connectivity is not so fast. And so quite a number of learners and teachers are struggling to cope with this. So Chennai is a metropolitan city, is an urban space. It obviously had a high speed internet connectivity. The place where I am located also, if it is not metropolitan, still an urban space. And we also do have a, a, a rather good internet connectivity uh, in and around. And that also helped us a lot. This model may not work if learners are located uh, in, in rural areas of India. Google Meet, uh, as we were to work, and on Google Classroom, we worked on this. We used Google Meet in this because uh, we, we wanted only one login ID and password. Uh, if uh, I know that the, many of the learners might not be able to remember uh, innumerable login IDs and passwords. So uh, working with uh, Gmail, obviously people have. We also wanted to work with Google Drive. We also wanted to work with Blog, Google Group. So Google Classroom and Google Meet was a, a very good match going together. Uh, I know Zoom is a far better alternative. Zoom is very user-friendly. Another thing, it can also be used, but still we, we decided to work on Google Meet. The only idea was that it has uh, uh, email ID and password collaboration with uh, Google Classroom and all other Google apps, which we were supposed to work on this during the workshop. It is less tiring to move around the, in, in the lab uh, uh, or class and conduct a workshop. It is extremely exhausting to remotely conduct a workshop. Sitting in one place, one position, constantly peeping in tiny camera and speaking with nobody, absolutely. No faces to see, no eye contact uh, with learners to get a nod, uh, no, no body gestures to reply our non-question questions. <laughs> is very exhausting. What is tiring is this, that, that there is absolutely no faces. We, we work in a faceless environment and we just have to get uh, self-motivated that learners might be learning there. And uh, absolute no response from body language also because they also are held up uh, against their mobile phone or a laptop there. And right now, like I'm speaking with nobody because right now I can't see anybody because my screen is only visible here. Well, so lots of patience is required in, in all these things and uh, uh, quite a new new way teachers are supposed to uh, manage themselves. That if I am dependent upon the, the eye contact of learners, if I am dependent on enthusiasm of learner, 
if I am dependent on the, the body language of learner, uh, perhaps in online, remote teaching, it is not going to work. We have to now learn a new skills. We have to develop a new perspectives of learning that without eye contact, without body gestures, without any response from anybody. How we keep on motivating ourselves and keep on delivering the content becomes very, very important part in, in, in online uh, remote teaching. Uh, this is the, the environment in which we are working, as we have seen some of the GIF images also uh, 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 earlier. Two devices, uh, how they were looking at one devices, Google Meet, and they were working on, on laptop kind of a thing. A very interesting improvisation is done by one of the participants, where there is a water bottle and you keep uh, the mobile phone standing over there, so you may be hands-free uh, working on various things. What I was not able to do, uh, a rubric in Google Classroom for written assignments or oral presentation, we were not able to work out because creating a rubric in Google Classroom requires still high end of uh, a skill for learners. Learners should be well aware about what is rubric and how rubric works, how rubrics can be prepared. So we require one, one uh, hour uh, orientation or training into uh, what is rubric and how it can be worked out and then we can mold it into Google Classroom. So uh, maybe because of uh, a few slow learners in the group, uh, we were not able to manage rubric in, in our uh, uh, assignment. Import grades uh, from online quiz test in Google Classroom, we're not able to do originality check, we are not able to do because these are G Suite features of Google Classroom and most of the participants were having personal login ID. They were not having their institutional login IDs to access Google Classroom. Uh, we suggested their institute to have a G Suite for education from Google. So more features of Google Classroom can be utilized uh, in this. Uh, Google Meet uh, and, uh, and Google Classroom has the connection now, but again, only for G Suite uh, uh, accounts only, not for everybody. So that also we are not able to uh, do. All the features of Google Meet we are not able to explore. There are not many features in Google Meet. But still, because of time constraint, uh, 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 we are not able to include uh, various features of Google Meet into our uh, things because I, I misjudged uh, that the six hours, two, two days we work, three hours a day, which was very lengthy. Our initial plan was to work for two hours, but it went on for three hours uh, and it was very tiresome for me also and also for learners because in some of the feedback, Learners have told that three hours is a very long duration, like 60 to 90 minutes is fine enough, but this is a quite a long time to sit and, and keep on learning there. We might have gone for two slots of one and a half hours. So now from tomorrow, I'm going to have another group of teachers uh, having this workshop, and we are going to have two slots now, 90 minutes slot, and then after three hours break, we are going to have another slot for uh, that. Uh, uh, some of the feedback, written feedback that we have received by participants. After this, we are going to see some of the oral feedback from the participants who are also with us uh, today. Uh, very interesting things we, we came to know from their feedback. One was like focusing on slow learners with the help of technology is possible. Because in our group, there were a few slow learners. In each and every teacher's classroom, the students uh, will be of mixed ability. There will be slow learner also. So how to focus on slow learners, how teachers should have passions, and, uh, and, and still it is possible. Uh, many times in a real classroom environment, focusing on slow learner is not possible, whereas here uh, it, it is uh, possible. Second one was an insight of the probable difficulties that could be encountered during the process of teaching and learning. That also was experienced by the learner that these are the probable difficulties. So this also was good outcome that uh, this workshop taught them uh, as a kind of an experience rather than reading and learning from somewhere that how uh, 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 possible uh, uh, difficulties will be encountered during the process. Uh, this was very interesting observation since uh, this was a large group, uh, like 25 steel is a large group. Uh, each person had uh, different queries, uh, different queries and resource person was one who was dealing with all the different queries. Uh, uh, resource person should be well versed with all the aspects of whatever platform they are working on. And that is why it is necessary that we are on single platform rather than multiple platforms. So sometimes it took a really long time to move from one step to another. Three hours at a time was a little stretched for everyone including the resource person, it could be made into one hour sessions lasting for six days instead of six hours in two days. 
the next response was i hope educational institutions understands the need of laptop for all teachers in 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 present world and consider sponsoring them like how they do it uh, in iit companies so so they they wanted a support from institute for laptops uh, also the today if uh, uh, efdp has given uh, me that was one of the responders that uh, confidence to teach and conduct classes through digital device now this is very important we, we, uh, teachers should be inspired teachers should be motivated for digital platform they get confidence that is very important that this i i, I it was not my objective that learners will feel confident after doing this so this was uh, something a uh, very good take away from this one uh, learn to use technology in the class of mixed abilities so that this happened because of peer learning there are some slow learners and fast learners so that also was a very good outcome that we have received from that apart from this also there were very interesting observation but some of the highlights of this learning uh, 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 as a part of experience i am sharing here this all things now this is the time that i would request uh, some of the participants uh, uh, to share their experiences so i will this is the the series uh, the list in which they will keep on coming uh, dr sangamitra dr vanita dr anni chandri baisakhi jennifer uh, i will stop sc sharing my screen now and uh, i would uh, request them to unmute their mic and one by one uh, you can come and take few minutes to share your your uh, experience Uh, with uh, uh, everybody there yeah. so let me invite first uh, dr sangam mitra or anybody who is ready you have to unmute your mic you can also show your video when you come here and you can uh, speak with us yeah vanita is there yeah yes uh, uh, this is uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. i'm vanita yeah. um, yeah. so this workshop is really interesting because uh, Uh, this is the first time we were experimenting a uh, online learning platform so uh, boiling down to just google meet you know google classroom was easier because we had heard of moodle we had heard of other things but uh, this seemed more uh, what it was very concise and precise he brought it down to google classroom so that way professor marad was very helpful because uh, there was no confusion as to what the objective was the objective was to train us in google classroom so that objective was very clear and by the end of two days that objective was completely achieved and like he said it was the confidence that the whole thing gave us there are several uh, i mean we have videos youtube videos which says how to work with google classroom how to you know uh, start off with the google classroom there are very very exhaustive videos on the youtube uh, to train us in google classroom but none of this could have been as effective as how professor barat trained us step by step he told us See, for example there was one thing that i wanted to tell share this was uh, i had the two logins on my laptop so i wasn't able to create i kept telling him i'm clicking on create but it's not coming so he said check whether you have two logins there's somebody else logged into your system so there was another login that my son had so i had to log out and log into my account so very very simple things and he had a total understanding of the entire platform so wherever we were stuck he could guide us he could tell us that this is where you're stuck do this and you will get to where we are so every single person to be told all of us had uh, different questions but he answered them and he was able to tell us that this is how we go about things and uh, this confidence that he gave us today we can uh, work on a google classroom very easily we are confident we are clear with what we got to do i think that confidence was what this workshop gave us and having this two technology thing because uh, like he said the screen sharing or working with just one device would have been very difficult this is all instructions on google meet on the phone and carrying out carrying it out simultaneously on the laptop so that was really very helpful for all of us and uh, there were certain things like he said uh, this plagiarism check uh, versions of uh, google classroom our versions were old so we didn't have certain aspects like the plagiarism check so that could be incorporated in the future but then we understood the basics especially the uh, devising the quizzes it took a really long time but when we finally accomplished we knew we were there we knew we had you know done what the workshop intended to do and uh, this was not just one learner that sir had to manage there were 25 of us each of us had we stuck at different points in time with different things we had different queries some of them just said i can't upload from my google drive so he had to just say your google drive is bursting you have to go pull out all the information make sure that your google drive is clean upload information again so all this was done uh, in a very very effective manner 
and with lots of patients, especially when we are not tech savvy, we've never worked on an e-learning platform before, and uh, we were almost like students who were fumbling around. So he had the patience to get, you know, tell us that this is how you do. Very, very simple things that we didn't actually know. So this was, instructions are very clear. He said, look at the flower button for settings. Uh, look at the plus button here on your right side of the screen, on the left side of your screen, on the center of your screen. Very, very explicit, explicit instructions so that, you know, we never had this feeling that uh, we were fumbling. We actually came from fumbling to, uh, to a sort of streamlined activity the second day because we, uh, he understood us really effectively in terms of how we understood technology. So today, if we have the confidence to start Google Classroom and go about it with uh, you know, zest and energy and uh, that fear of working on an online platform, that was taken away completely by him. He gave us the confidence that anybody could do it and you can do it. So that way, that learning was really good. And uh, thanks to you, sir, this, uh, this is an amazing experience. And uh, the head of the department who coordinated, we made that request to her from, uh, uh, at college that we wanted a very hands-on workshop and we didn't want to just have a theoretical construct on how to do e-learning because that is what most courses offer you. They tell you this is how the advantages, the disadvantages, but we never really get to do actually practically. This was a very, very hands-on workshop, almost like sir was next to us standing, telling us, okay, look at this or look at that. Thank you so much. And this is what I wanted to share with everyone. Yeah, thanks. That was very interesting, uh, Dr. Vanita. Very well expressed also. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Who is the next? Uh, yeah. Please unmute your uh, mic and video also. We can see you also. Ah, yes. Please introduce yourself and then say. Yeah. Hello, sir. This is Dr. Uh, it was a really wonderful experience, sir. We learned many new Having a lot of patience, sir. Hats off to your patience because uh, many a times we were stuck, but you helped us a lot, sir. And um, you taught us in a very minute way. And uh, it was very, like, very, uh, uh, we enjoyed the experience also a lot because you told us that um, there in the left hand side there is a flower button type, uh, tap that one. In the right hand side, there is is equal to sign tab that one. So we enjoyed actually. We didn't even feel that three hours has gone and we are learning these things from you. And other thing is that I have tried also with my students this Google Classroom and uh, I succeeded. So it's like an achievement for me. And uh, like uh, you have transformed me from a technologically handicapped person to little bit tech savvy. <laughs> So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's a wonderful experience. And we want to learn many more things from you, sir. Kindly guide us, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks, sir. It is good that you started the class and you are getting a success with your students also. So that is, it is good to listen that, that uh, things are coming out and it is working in a real life environment. Yeah. Thanks thank a lot. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay, Dr. Annie, I think, is ready. Yeah, um, yeah. Dr. Annie, Annie? Yeah. 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 Uh, Vanita has more or less, uh, you know, she has uh, comprehensively told mm -hmm. everything. There are a few things I would like to highlight, which I benefited uh, from the class sessions. Um, uh, one was the uh, having both the uh, 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 technology, that is a Google Meet and the laptop. Uh, actually, you can classify me as a slow learner and uh, uh, I am not that uh, adept in uh, technology and I was a little apprehensive about, you know, how well I would come out out of these sessions. But uh, having those two, having the Google Meet and the laptop and being able to do hands-on, simultaneously getting instructions from you and uh, doing it on the laptop, uh, I was able to do without a hitch, you know, except for a few areas, like when I had to feed the uh, mail ID for the Google um, team uh, groups. 
uh, there you know the computer was not taking the mail id which i fed in and i had to or except for a few places there you know where the computer did not take my data in otherwise your instructions were very very you know very clear and i could uh, go step by step and i could move from one step to the other with so easily so this was uh, one uh, thing that i would like to you know really appreciate having the, the google meet as well as a laptop where we could simultaneously practice and you know get uh, uh, immediate uh, hands on experience as you kept uh, explaining how to move from one step to the other the classroom the assignments the quiz and everything so that is one aspect i would like to highlight and the next thing is um, your patience was really amazing dr bharat uh, you, we had a lot of people uh, in between who had a lot of problems and they had to stop and um, sir you really stopped you took them forward and you uh, made it a point to explain and take them to the next step uh, is really amazing your uh, patience was really uh, something which i really think i should start uh, learning to implement for my students uh, and um, the next thing is um, it really gave me the confidence as i said uh, earlier we were uh, you were handling a mixed crowd with uh, people with you know different uh, knowledge in this uh, digital field space so um, i i uh, being in the you know probably in this uh, slow learner uh, uh, space so by the end of the two sessions i was really you know uh, i came out really confident you know that uh, i was able to do i was able to you know give you the whatever response you asked simultaneously i could you know go to the two or three classrooms which we created and you know interact with the two three classrooms i really was amazed you know i to put uh, you know handle uh, uh, technology uh, quite fast usually we think you know the youngsters uh, they do it at a lightning speed and like me i do not come under the youngsters crowd um but at the end of it i i really gained quite a lot of confidence um thanks to you sir uh, you re really took it forward very well and um, you helped us quite a lot in uh, in every step so the two sessions were amazing we learned quite a lot and we uh, though we did have uh, uh, you know uh, difficulties here and there but overall it was a real learning experience uh thank you sir i should really thank you for your uh, patience and a uh, great learning uh, experience that you gave us great thanks thanks uh, any yeah but that, that is really good that we we start learning well, experiencing multiple classroom because our students are going to have multiple classrooms so how are they going to handle multiple classroom that that learning experience teachers should have and whatever problem they face in learning on multiple classrooms is very necessary and that that's a very good point that you have also uh, shared here uh, on working with different classrooms at a time yeah thanks a lot thank you thanks yeah uh, who else is ready yeah, yeah dr chandra yeah good evening sir uh, sir yeah, i good think evening. you started off and that word which you used technophobic which is so true because uh, out of 25 participants 23 24 of us what technophobic people who actually did not know and uh, forget uh, handling one we you made us so confident that we could use two digital devices at the same time we had the laptop and the cell phone and carried on and like you said that yes patience and we were all these isolated learners sometimes calling out to either our husbands or children to help us with something not an iota of irritation in you continuously you know there were so many of us we thought it would start it would be a two hour session but it went on beyond three hours and sometimes we did not realize we did not bother about the time the way you made it interesting and i have to share this with you the, at the end of the first day we stopped at a place where you actually taught us in the google classroom to upload materials and you said keep the material ready for your class and tomorrow we will have it you know we will check who's done what believe me sir all of us after that we learned till that place and then we did not even know how to upload the material in the google classroom so we were quite worried that how to go about that we started asking and then i remember again all of us asked you and then you told us 
that you have to go to Google Drive and how my colleagues explain that you actually told us there is a flower on the screen. There are a few boxes that you can see, you know, go and click on those dots, which is amazing. So, and like, yes, we have become tech savvy in this faceless environment. Now, I think in the next class we need from you is, sir, how to be a patient teacher. Because that infinite patience we see in you is amazing. And definitely thanks to the head of the department who actually, you know, helped us to learn and just selected the apt person for us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, many times we are seeing that uh, uh, so, several things are so easy, like uploading things on Google Drive or using cloud storage. And uh, many times we think that take it as granted that uh, this is so simple, everybody must be knowing it. But when we work in this uh, hands-on environment, we really find that yes, teachers still need a kind of a guidance in uploading a material in Google Drive kind of uh, cloud storage. When we listen to the word cloud storage, it is such a heavy word like People think you, you have to be a software engineer to understand what is cloud storage uh, and a kind of thing. But in many workshops, I have seen that uh, 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 no teachers are not uh, that techno savvy uh, or they don't know that lots of things directly from an Android mobile phone uh, or a laptop can be preserved, can be saved uh, in, in Google Drive. And, and then you can share with so many people, with learners, students, colleagues, and uh, it, it is so amazing platform there. So thank you, Dr. Chandri, for drawing uh, attention to that part uh, also. Uh, who else is there? Do we have anybody? Yeah, Sangamitra. Yeah, Sangamitra, you can, yeah. You can also uh, put on your camera. You are raising your hand, Sangamitra. Are you able to listen, Sangamitra? Uh, I think there is some problem on the side of Sang Sangamitra. I, I have seen you have raised your hand. Uh, you're, okay, your video also is on now. Your mic is also on, but we are not able to see you. I think there is some audio problem on your side. Speak something. I'm afraid we do not hear you, Sangamitra. Uh, Perhaps if you could um, click on the microphone, the arrow next to the microphone, and select another microphone, that might work. Very lovely to see you. <laughs> ah, she's using the headset, great. And all you have to do now is still select the microphone under the settings. Do you see the microphone on the bottom left hand side? There's a tiny little arrow next to it. Yeah, you, and when you get to the arrow, you go to the bottom of the list and choose audio settings. And then you can test your microphone and configure it. Sometimes you have to choose another microphone. Like on the left hand side bottom there is a microphone there is a pop-up window test speakers and microphone if you can do that then it, it may work uh, we have to we have to learn this from you Dilip on the <laughs> left side there is a bottom microphone <laughs> I'm just kidding but it's so wonderful to hear that so yeah. many are appreciative of your patience Okay. And this is what you're showing, absolutely, you're demonstrating to us. <laughs> but maybe the uh, Indian accent is working. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. yeah, we, that's, Germans, that's true. we Germans, we have um, this um, we have phase of making it work kind of accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to try it again, Sangamitra? We're listening. <laughs> Sangamitra, you can try one more thing. You can remove this uh, headphone and try to speak. Uh, is it a laptop? 
are you on laptop or a pc <laughs> no i think she, she has got now that it's probably yeah, yeah. when she plugged it's in headphones that happened yeah. okay anybody okay. else is there anybody uh, we are also uh, running out of time so anybody else from that group present here should we take questions we have one dr san uh, uh, jiwani here professor jiwani okay go ahead so uh, he also is he also is uh, conducting uh, the kind of workshops remotely so i invite uh, uh, professor jiwani mahesh jiwani to share a few experience and then let us have some questions yeah yeah ha uh, yes. good evening to everybody yeah good evening sir i am audible can you put on your camera i am audible okay uh, fine i'll do that happy to see your face also uh -huh. yeah okay yes yeah is a professor jiwani a professor of uh, electronics uh, with uh, uh, saurashtra university here in gujarat india yeah professor jiwani sir yeah please yeah yeah, yeah i am switching i am moving to a good place where i can uh, okay you can see now uh, yeah. we, uh, okay these are the techniques we have to learn <laughs> we have to do all the jugglery and also we have to teach to participants how to keep on my uh, so the first because of this covid 19 there are two uh, things i experienced and everybody started learning, uh, uh digital uh, techniques and all these things so that is a good aspect second it called the worst part and i am defining it just like a uh, webidemic is another epidemic of webinars so from morning to evening all people are busy in uh, webinars 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 so now it is just like a tv and channels uh, people are going attending webinars as according to this uh topic of discussion uh just i we completed uh, not myself but uh, i am a part of one uh, training institute who are uh, uh in the field of teaching uh, giving training to teachers basically it's a called the hrdc human resource development centers and we just completed a six a six batches of teachers and provided hands on training and my experience is while do while you do training online on streaming media there are uh, really uh, you have to puzzle a lot uh, being a technical person i have to facility at my home also so basically i did hands on using six devices mixer and all these things uh, recording capturing software from moving uh, from one screen to another screen so these are i can able to do being a technical person otherwise it's very difficult i created studio at my home uh, barar sir knows very well and i'm keeping virtual screen i'm i'm using chroma and through juga i i i i created all these things uh, during the lockdown period and try to uh, stream in a professional way so and <clears throat> use almost all kind of uh, streaming technology which are used uh, right away in this uh, present era and tried a lot to give as best as to participants and with uh, zoom sessions means uh, any kind of a platform zoom uh, uh, webex cisco we also created a google classroom and a third platform we use is a, a youtube live streaming so a google classroom is a good platform we find it's a small kind of a lms things where in comparison with the moodle where if you have a track if you want to keep a track on a participants obviously you have to go for a moodle but if you don't want to keep a track of participants uh, this uh, google classroom is a best best choice uh, i am personally feeling because it's so easy to set and it's so easy to evaluate and provide assessment and all the materials so it's a good fantastic facility google meet is also a good platform but only the problem is as barar sir says a muting each and every participants until and unless every participants will not learn how to uh, behave on online uh, platform uh, still that 
uh, problem remains the same. But we, uh, uh, I'm taking in a positive way. At least uh, people started using these all these things. So in the next phase, probably they learn more and do uh, in a better way. Okay, thank you very much for providing me a, uh, time to share my views. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dr. Giovanni, sir. Yeah. Yeah, over to uh, uh, Vance. Huh? Over to you. Um, could I just um, mention this, what I also wrote in text chat? Um, I have tried to live stream from the Zoom room um, mm. and it has worked very well. Um, the process is rather easy. You can, if you have, for example, you have a Google account and on this Google account, you have a YouTube channel attached to this Google account. It could also be a private uh, YouTube channel. Then it's as easy as putting in, you, you have to enable that in, in the Zoom settings, first of all. And then it's as easy as in the Zoom main panel at the bottom, you will find a live stream to YouTube or live stream to Facebook. Uh, the options, what you've selected, you can add your account name yeah and then you can also add if you like uh, if you are actually using a youtube channel that is not really your own account but it's a public uh, account from an institute um, then in the youtube channel you will still have to retrieve what's known as the streaming key so you can in zoom you can add either a google account name plus the password or a streaming key which then allows you just inside the meeting as you're about to start it hit recording but also to hit start live streaming and the beautiful thing about the live streaming of these zoom sessions is the zoom bombers stay outside <laughs> now i mean there's no disturbance from people and we find that a lot of people can listen to the audio of a live stream much better than to the audio of a Zoom room. Besides, the Zoom room has a certain capacity. It's 250 people or 300 or it's, you know, and it fills up as you appear to live. You're so popular, it fills up easily. And then you can enable the live stream uh, just in the beginning of the meeting with a click of a button. And then it will live stream out to YouTube and people can still hear your wonderful words and, and of encouragement and your training. And uh, um, I highly recommend um, people when they use Zoom, every Zoom account can do that, every basic account, yeah. The only thing you have to have, you have to have rights on the YouTube channel to live stream, which if you have a new YouTube channel, you might not have the rights as of yet, but otherwise uh, Zoom is very, very good. Yeah, uh, uh, to add, add to that, uh, I would like to say that uh, we use Google Meet and Meet do not allow uh, uh, any kind of uh, live streaming on any platform. So we used OBS, OBS platform. Yeah, OBS is what I used um, a lot myself. I'm a total OBS fan and I used to live stream um, presentations in a 3D environment, in Second Life, mm -hmm. in OpenSim and okay. their OBS is absolutely fantastic. And I tried to teach uh, somebody else how to use OBS to live stream a Zoom session. And I said, oh, that's very easy, you know, OBS, and it's, you can set it up automatically. It will understand the bit rate. It will understand what you try and scream. The scene setup is so easy. So I tried to teach her, and it took us two hours, two and a half hours, eventually three hours. It was nearing midnight, and we were... Um, still not able she was not able to to set up obs appropriately for zoom and then i told her well let me do it you know i'm i'm part of your your session she had lots of applications for the session and i will stream for you and eventually she says oh i think i saw the other day zoom can live stream and so we tried this out and within two minutes flat she was able to live stream and we 
burst out laughing that we spent three hours trying to set up OBS. We, we, we were like on the floor laughing our heads off. It was near midnight. We'd been working away. And then she, she this, this uh, 20 seconds or 30 seconds of the live stream is, has been recorded. And this is a, a, very, a very short video of two women laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> we kept that recording because it was so hilarious. <laughs> but no, this is this obviously is, is fantastic. But Zoom can even do better. So, and Zoom is free. Uh, in the initial, uh, before we begin, Vance was talking about that, that we had a, 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 a webinar for two days and we had uh, like more than 1300 reg registrations and yeah. our platform was meet and only 250 can come in, in, in that. So we opted for both the live stream on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And you said very right that the quality of live stream is very good. Uh, it's excellent. And yeah. Better than the live also. Yeah, we experienced that on both because maybe those platforms are mm -hmm enhancing the audio quality and the video quality and maybe because and how, of that how many quality. did you have on the live stream in the end of the day uh, total we got 18000 views on both the platforms 18000 my <laughs> word <laughs> yeah. so it was very, very good success that 18000 people got this all things yeah. that is awesome absolutely yeah. brilliant <laughs> yeah do you think we can get uh, Sumatra, I know what's her name, Sumatra, so to see whether she's able to talk, Sang Sangamitra, she was, she's yeah, able to talk yeah. now maybe? Sangamitra, are you there? She, she posted something in the chat, like I think maybe she's not able to have, Sangamitra, are you there? And are you able to speak? Maybe she can try now. I recommended her to re-log briefly, but maybe she hasn't done it. Oh, she's given up. Never mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yes, friends. Uh, we are just eight twenty-eight now. Two minutes are there for our session. Then. <laughs> well, uh, I had one question, and Heike had the same question, uh, something similar, and uh, you said that it was very difficult to teach as if in a vacuum. There is no. You suggested there was no feedback coming back to you. But, and then uh, I believe you had a technical person on the ground there. So the participants were working with that technical person. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and so, but you're getting no feedback at all? Is the technical person yeah. communicating yeah. with you or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Text, yeah. text chat, nothing? Uh, no, uh, 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 the person was trying to speak orally on that side. Uh -huh. But the, 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 like they do not have a particular vocabulary or words or language uh -huh. to express the problem. Okay. So we we keep on guessing whether you have this problem or that problem. Mm. We ask what is on your screen, and mm -hmm. uh, many times people do not see exactly what can be seen on the screen. They see mm -hmm. only the big things, and sometimes you have to click somewhere in a corner on a smaller spaces. And we say look at this, but they are not able to find that. Mm -hmm. So they, they are orally communicating, but what problem we face is that we do not have an, a, a particular vocabulary to speak about the problem. Mm -hmm. and, and that creates a problem. So we have to guess that if you are trying to say this, maybe this must be the problem. Mm. Yes, okay. And would you, maybe uh, screenshots that you can put online, like with Jing, yeah. if you use Jing, yeah. you can make a screenshot <clears throat> and then just put the URL and the other person yeah. can see what you're trying to do. You are trying to do, yeah. That can be a good option, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or did, were they able to share their screen so that you could see what uh, they're trying to do? Sharing the screen also is a good one. That mm -hmm. is the first lesson we should do uh, mm -hmm. when we do online workshop. The very first thing you have to teach everybody is that how to share your screen. Yeah. That is the first one. <laughs> yes. You start with that. <laughs> well, yeah. No, you, you've got to start somewhere. And it seems that you've yeah. done an excellent job and your participants mm. certainly did benefit from your sessions. Yeah. And it's a yeah. good lesson for us to, to see how you managed so many people. So, mm. um, yes, very interesting. I don't know if anybody else has any other questions. Yeah, if anybody is there with any questions, we can help. Yeah. We had questions in the text chat, and mm -hmm. I always, when I vlog the session or podcast it, 
uh, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll include an audio and a video in, uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I'm recording it now, and then I'll take the, the video and I'll put it on YouTube. Uh, someone asked this in the text chat. It gets, uh, it will be uh, podcast at learningtogether.net. So okay. uh, you'll find it, if not tomorrow, mm -hmm. the day after, but usually it's okay. within a day now. Yeah, so anyway, mm -hmm. that's just for the benefit of everybody listening. And also the, the text chat will be uh, placed in that podcast. So Okay, that will be good, yeah. Yes, you can read it there. And I presume yeah. it's okay with her, but if I do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I will, I will look at a video also. Mm -hmm. Just ping me when you upload the video, yeah. Of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, I have I, seen Nick's, Nick's video, I have seen. Uh, he also has it. Yeah, the same way, the same system. Yeah, so, same way, yeah. 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 yeah that is good. So mm -hmm. I, I try to put those up within a day or two. Uh, now that I'm not working, this is my job now. I, I don't get paid okay. for it, but, you know, still, I get yeah. paid in karma. The same <laughs> way you get paid. <laughs> This is a very good service that you are doing for so many people around the world. They may not be saying thank you to you, but they are learning a lot from you eh? and oh. the things that is Webheads is doing. Yeah. If they didn't say thank you, I would not do it. So there you are. I'm getting <laughs> thanked just like you are. So, uh, yeah. and it was really nice to meet you in uh, Valor as well. And, um, you know, so we obviously made a, an impression on one another. Okay. Does anybody else have any Graham, comments? Graham also was there. Graham Stanley also was there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. any, any comments, Graham? Yeah. Always good to hear from Are you Graham. There, Graham. He also was in India. We were together in one workshop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Came to Gujarat also. He came to, yeah. Okay. I think Graham might be giving one of the sessions on the, in the Tallinn. Uh, this is a talent and he says, series. I can't unmute. I enjoyed the conference. He says, ah. just put a message. <laughs> <laughs> can't unmute. Is that because you don't have, can we unmute you? Is that, is that a problem? Is it us or is it? Uh, now, now I can, now I can speak. Ah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. I couldn't uh, unmute before. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dilip. I really enjoyed uh, today. Uh, yes. you know, it's so good to learn from what everyone is doing, you know, yourselves in India and other people around the world and, and really to sort of uh, look at different contexts and share that knowledge and information. And yes, I remember that conference that we were both yeah, at very went, well. It was uh, yeah. a fabulous experience. My first time to your wonderful country. I hope it's not the last mm -hmm. So we can, I hope we can travel again in the future soon. And thank you, Vance, for, for organizing all, all, of, all of this and, uh, you know, for the Webheads experience, which I've recently re-engaged with. And yes, I'll, I'll definitely think of something that, um, that I can offer to the community. Take your time. It looks like we'll be in isolation for some time. So... Yeah, when you're so ready. It's months, months I'm sure years. I know. I know you're very busy. So the the only the good thing is you can't travel. So you might as well give presentations and exactly news like this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Well, anyway, good to talk to you. Good to see Heike as well, and and Dilip, of course. So are are there any other comments? Anybody else would like to say anything, or do you need to go, Dilip? Are you? Uh, mm -hmm. Can I put in a word, please? I, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dr. Kalyani. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, many of my students uh, about their online video sessions, they are um, skeptical. They do not want it. They keep telling me, no, we would rather want live classes. And uh, well, we have to do online sessions anyway. And I think what is most challenging about it is the follow up to keep them motivated. It's a comment. I'm just uh, sharing it so that I can know your views on it. It is very important to keep them motivated by giving them assignments and following up with activities and uh, question answer sessions and uh, getting them to report what they've studied, uh, which you're doing, Dilip, sir. And uh, I find it very challenging and exhausting. Uh, I, I really don't know how far I can go on like this because it's uh, many times more challenging than a live class. I, I suppose to do it quite well. Do you have any uh, tips? And uh, I, I'm already, it is just one month into it and I'm already exhausted. <laughs> I uh, hope okay, you get one. So like, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, you, you have your classes on Udemy, yeah? and you are doing lots of uh, online almost, yeah. uh, classes and this. Yeah. Hmm. Suddenly, yes. my classroom and sessions got disrupted, and I had to take to Zoom hmm. or uh, some other platform. Not, not. I don't do it very regularly, but people hmm. just they they like the Udemy videos and online sessions, but they are very regular. Uh, I just don't think it is re really working at all because. Uh, people I see one in one class, I don't see the next day, and and I don't have your patience also. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, 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 that's a very interesting point also, like uh, teachers online requires lots of patience, and it, it, it grows, but it takes time also, like, uh, because you, you are not able, you are able to reach to so many students, maybe because they are not giving feedback directly. So we get frustrated, but that's what the point that people don't say thank you, they don't say like, but they silently, they keep on observing and, and doing the things. I don't really understand whether I don't really understand whether they are following me or whether they are doing any work because it's very haphazard. It is not regular. They are feedback, regular. their assignments. Assignments, yeah. It is completely in unstructured. Front of the classroom, I can just ask them questions and it's it's very direct and personal and effective. Uh, yeah. I am facing this problem. I don't know if other people are facing it too. Yeah, Philip, everybody, can, because, yeah, uh, yes, the Philip, Prakash, yeah. I, yes, I, I, you know, Kalyani he was speaking and I thought I must chip in, uh, in uh, not exactly in support of her, but uh, sharing my own experience here. Uh, uh, because our students, my students are scattered almost all over India. Uh, we are a central university, so when the students were told to go home, uh, because of this COVID-19 thing, they went back to their places and their networks are not actually uh, wherever they are in those remote places, they don't work. So uh, it really becomes a problem. Sometimes there's not uh, a kind of response that uh, your hard work uh, needs, requires, and you don't get that. But is there any, uh, I mean, uh, any, any way by which this, um, uh, this network issue, issue can be uh, uh, some kind of platforms that use less uh, data uh, and uh, data, uh, you know, uh, what I, I think you, you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, less of uh, data connectivity, less, mm -hmm. less amount of data. If that's, are there any platforms that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that use uh, uh, less amount of data? Yeah, yeah, that, Dr. Hello. Prakash. Yeah, uh, uh, that's a very interesting point for, for example, India rural areas where there is still 2G connections, which is there, but 3G or 4G is still a problem. So now, uh, uh, recently, I, I read that Webex is uh, Cisco's Webex platform is going to run on a slower network also. So they have started working on. Okay that if this is going to spread and this is going to be for a couple of months uh, because of Corona and other things, then you will have to reach out to those areas where there is low network connectivity. So they have started coming down on a lower bandwidth. So uh, uh, Cisco's Webex perhaps has started working on that, that on lower bandwidth, you can also have your online classes and that. So some software engineers are working on, on that part also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, Heki that also is, had um, something. That is an excellent, excellent point because a lot of people the world over have internet packages that are data mm. packages. So they get two gigabyte or maybe just one gigabyte per month. So video conferencing is using up a lot of space. What I would be interested, if anybody can measure this, let us know whether the live stream on YouTube costs less of a data package. Um, whether a Zoom meeting costs more. I mean, we found, for example, the free conferencing system, big blue button, cost on average 500 megabytes per one hour of meeting. And Zoom costs on average 100 megabytes per one hour Zoom meeting. So I would be interested if anybody can measure this um, to find out how much a live stream hour costs 
on YouTube, maybe a live stream hour on Facebook because they all have different bit rates. So it could be that one or the other is uh, more economical and that would be great to share. And Teams, yeah, good point about Teams. Uh, how much does Teams use? I would like to come up with a list that would give out recommendations for people if they have data packages they have to be careful of using because one video conference and it's all gone and the next time they need it for emails, you know, or downloads. And uh, so it's a real problem. Interesting perspective. Teams is very heavy perhaps, yeah. I don't know whether it was for when I used Teams, I found it very heavy, very loaded and it requires uh, a much larger bandwidth uh, to work with. Yeah, I think you're right, Dilip. Um, it's one of the things I would love to know. Um, what you just said, Heike, just a comparison of 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 uh, different platforms like that. So, how did you get the information that you you've just shared with us? Where was that published? Um, um, I asked one of the students. Um, she was in Nepal and she had a limited data package. And we tried a certain web conferencing system and I asked her to check the amount of data used. And uh, she came back with that response that Zoom was a lot better for her. The 100 megabytes roughly for, for one hour. And we tend to have one and a half hours of sessions uh, right. at the university. So I would, it would need somebody to have a data package to actually let us know when looking yeah. at the clock, as it were. It's kind of, it's difficult because it, there's very reasons why why I'm interested in this. I won't go into all of them, but um, but basically having that kind of information to compare that technical specs is really I couldn't I can't find anything public on the internet. I can find reviews of Zoom versus Teams or you know various uh, that are just opinions really or. Um, but without actually looking at any technical specs, which is what I'm interested in. So if anyone comes up, manages to find any of that, I'd be very interested in, in what you've just proposed. You're muted, Heike. Did you want to say something, Heike? Yes, I okay. was looking for the slide. Um, I have some interesting data which I found from the Zoom um, website because people were asking how much of a bandwidth do they really need for Zoom meetings and this is information, oh sorry it's in German, apologies, I'll, I'll correct that soon, but uh, basically it says that a Zoom meeting you need 600 KBS, I'm looking at this figure, for down and up. That is um, approximately, let me just highlight that a little bit, yeah. Um, that is approximately the, oh, that wasn't very good. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, this is, the, this is here. Uh, 0.66 kilo, uh, 0 0.6 megabyte download and one, no, the other way around, 1.2 megabyte upload is the one I'm interested in. And you can compare this with the 3G versus 4G um, data that uh, is a, sort of the average. A 3G has between 1 0 0.1 and 8 megabytes per second. And here the Zoom meeting, it needs 1.2 megabytes and 0 0.6. So definitely you can attend a Zoom meeting with 3G. But what I don't have is the amount of data it actually uses per meeting. And what I found very, very interesting is this data, because the screen sharing alone, if you want to, uh, because I was always wondering if people screen share, does that cost a lot more bandwidth? And the figures are amazing. Um, have a look at this. This is just like uh, 50 to 100 kilobytes per second additionally just for that screen sharing which is 0 0.05 megabytes that is almost like nothing that i found stunning so the videos itself are the ones that uh, cost a lot more bandwidth but the screen sharing doesn't that is so amazing that's data from from uh, zoom's website that 
I really, really enjoyed uh, hearing and reading about. Okay. It was very, very interesting data. Yeah, that was very useful also. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can find a link, you could put it in the text chat, or if not, you could just pass it to me. Um, I would have to do that one because it's in German. I did just the course. What I do is I'll put this in English for uh -huh. everyone. And also perhaps if we could collect the amount of megabytes, the usage per one hour video conferencing in comparison, if any one of you could check out your data packages and let us know. Uh, send the information to Vance. He's the one to collect it. <laughs> I was going to say send it to Heike, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> or you can send it to Graham. Why don't we send it to Graham? <laughs> You're the hub. You're the hub. <laughs> no, anyway, we're quite happy to get your information. Um, I don't want to keep Dilip, as he's been so generous with his time, and um, it is getting late here. But... Uh, Let's see, this has been uh, Learning Together episode 464. That's four, uh, starting since 2009. And we just started doing Talon, and this is as teaching and learning in isolation. This is the 19th webinar that has taken place in that series. This is the 20th of May, 2020. And we've been talking with uh, Dilip Barad, who uh, is in India and has uh, been uh, giving us a very interesting uh, explanation of his online classes and his philosophy behind them and giving us practical uh, reflections from his from his participants and we appreciate everyone who came and participated and contributed so any last words to leave before we say goodbye um, yeah, yeah it would be to, wonderful yeah. if everybody could switch on their webcams just now and give a, yeah. give Dilip an applause. Yeah. <laughs> you can open your mic yeah. now. Can, you can make you a can noise. You can also see everybody who are present here <laughs> also. They all put their camera on. Make a big noise and a big round of applause, everyone. Ah, so Heike <laughs> is the Zoom bomber. Ah. Ah, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's great. That's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for this opportunity. It was wonderful sharing ideas with everybody. Thanks our a lot. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. So good to get your perspectives. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll turn off the recording now. And nice to see everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I always go to the top of the screen to turn off the recording. It never works. Where is it? Here it is. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>